Are you looking to learn more about AWS EC2 placement groups? Well, then this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs, and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Architects, an organization dedicated towards training cloud architects. And in today's discussion, we're going to be talking about placement groups. So first, let's talk about what are placement groups. Now, placement groups are logical groupings of your computing instances. And if you group your computing instances together, in certain cases, you can really improve the performance, specifically with regards to high performance, very low latency applications. Now, every one of these placement groups has benefits and detractors, and we're gonna talk about that. But what we're really talking about is building a really high performance computing cluster with low latency, high packets per second performance, and high network throughput. So how do you improve the performance of applications? And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing, high performance computing workloads. So let's talk first about the first cluster placement group, and I'll describe what it is, and then I'll give you an example in terms of how it works. So when you're building a high-performance computing cluster, the closer you can get your computing instances together, the less latency will be. And even if your instances are spread via 1,000 miles via 10 gig Ethernet connection, you're still dealing with a few things that can cause latency. For example, you have the, the speed of light for the fiber optic connection. And even though light moves very fast, in fact, 186,000 miles a second, there's still time that it takes to cross that connection. Now, the other things that would be involved in latency would be the switches and routers that the packets have to traverse. Because each one of these things along the way does build some latency, very minimal, but it still builds some latency. And by reducing the distance and reducing the network connections and the cabling and the switches and routers, you can substantially improve the performance in a, in a, in a minute way for latency. But why would you do this? And then we'll talk about what this is. So in my past, I designed a lot of high performance computing system for financial applications. And when you're designing a financial application, let's say you're designing a trading system. If you're purchasing 10,000 shares of a stock and you have information based on what's going on in the current news for which everybody's gonna be trying to purchase the stock, if you could purchase that stock, say one millisecond faster than the other people, you might get it cheaper. Same thing if you were trying to sell a stock. If there was some bad news and you could sell one millisecond or one nanosecond faster than your competitors, even that would be a competitive advantage. So when we're talking about this kind of clustered placement group, we're talking about how do I take nanoseconds or milliseconds out of the equation? And that's what clustered placement groups are. So when you're dealing with a clustered placement group, what you're really doing, dealing with is you're placing all of your computing instances, and in most cases on the same rack and then in some cases on the same physical server. And they're typically inside of an, obviously it's gonna be inside of an availability zone. And by doing this, you're reducing the latency. So let's say you're dealing with a huge computing instance and you can put four of your servers or four of your virtual machines inside of that same ser big, big server that you're purchasing. By doing that, you're, you're gonna communicate across the back plane of the server, which in many cases is gonna be faster than the network performance, especially if you're dealing with a very high performance server. And not only could that be faster than the speeds that you would get through say a 10 gigabit connection, uh, ethernet connection, it's still gonna be on the same back plane. So it's not even gonna have to go into the switch, out of the switch and back into the same system. So higher throughput, but also less latency. Now, if you're gonna put all your computing instances in the same rack and maybe the same server or maybe two or three servers in the same high performance switch, you've got some problems and some benefits. So for example, if you've got a power failure for the rack, all of your computing instances are effectively shut down. You're out of business. I mean, you're completely down. So when you're gonna build a cluster placement group, if you also have high availability requirements, you're gonna have to build a second cluster placement group somewhere else. So, you get in the performance benefits of being in the same rack, but you also could be in the same switch, or you might not even traverse the switch at all if you're in the same server. But if anything were to happen to that server, for example, or that network switch, or the power, your cluster placement group is down. So absolutely no redundancy. So good performance, but you're losing specifically in terms of availability and redundancy. So have a good plan. You're gonna to need to have a, a second set uh, somewhere else. So the next concept is the concept of a partition placement group. And instead of placing all your servers in the same rack, maybe you're gonna move it into two different racks, but still in the same availability zone. 
So, and I, uh, in, in many cases, the, in the, um, close to each other in that same availability zone. And the, the reason you're going to do this is you're going to have some more redundancy than you would have with a cluster placement group, but you're still grouping your instances in the same data center. By doing that, you're going to really reduce the uh, latency that would be associated with communicating from data center to data center. So that's what you're doing. But this protects you good against uh, a, a failure that would occur in a rack. You could have a rack power failure. You could have a network switch failure. So any of those, or you could have, if you're using a physical load balancer, which typically you're not in an AWS environment, but you might dedicate one computing instance, I mean, one bare metal server to multiple load balancers. And if that server were to go down, you'd still have challenges. So anytime you're dealing with anything in the same rack, you've got problems. So think of this as dividing it across racks inside of a data center. So Good performance, but with much less risk and obviously less single points of failure than you'd have in a cluster placement group. And you can see in this graphic that we've drawn for you, you can see how we've spread our, our partition placement group across the data center. And so partition, we're, we're, we're taking the load and placing it in multiple places inside of our data center. Now, the uh, next concept is a spread placement group. And a spread placement group really places your instances across hardware. So you're going to be on different racks. So your servers are going to be different. Your PDUs or power distribution environments are going to be different. So you're going to get a lot more protection. And you can spread these groups across multiple availability zones if you need to. So this is a place where you can still have high performance, but now you've added some redundancy. But with that, now they, you're going to spread your instances over a larger distance and more rack and longer distance. You're going to have higher latency. So what are your needs? But this does give you much higher availability and uh, it's, it's with, with the reduced cost, but the, the, the side effect is reduced performance. So the cost is performance. So you can see in this diagram what we've drawn for you. We've uh, set up uh, a spread placement group across racks and across availability zones. So this is going to put you in a position where you've got uh, much better availability. So in summary, you've got a cluster placement group that's basically in the same rack in a data center. You've got a spread placement group that's across um, racks in the data center. And then you've got a partition placement group, which you can take it between availability zones or otherwise known as data centers. So now you understand all about cluster placement groups. Please download our free AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate eBook. The link is in the description below. And please download our free practice exam if you're studying for the AWS Certified Solution Architect or the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional Exam. And every Monday, we offer free 90-minute AWS Certified Solution Architect mentorship where you come, you ask us any kind of question you want, and we'll answer those questions for you live on the call. We do a Via Vita call. We do it every Monday, and it's completely free. It's a passion project of mine because I remember when I started studying for certifications many years ago, I could afford books but not training, but there were areas for which I just really wish I understood better and could ask someone questions. So that's why I built this group. It's a study group that's available free for all for the Certified Solution Architect Associate and it's every Monday, so please join. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and until then, study hard, stay safe.